It was two years ago back at the beginning of Season 3 that Bell was only just getting into the middle ranks of Level 3. Fast forward now to halfway through Season 4 and Bell's already steadily making his way through the next level. Which, in terms of actual time within the story, is only two months after his progression to Level 3 and a total of four months since his first encounter with Eyes. Yeah, less than half a year has passed since Bell first started striving to become as strong as her. So, since my last video only covered Bell's power up to the end of Season 2, I think it's time we take another look at how strong he's gotten since. Not only by examining the exact numbers behind his level 4 attributes, but also through his new Argo Vesta ability and his Hakugen knife. First things first though, let's quickly recap how the leveling system works again. I mean, Danmachi is after all one of the few series with a genuinely interesting progression system. Plus, with the last video having been two years ago, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you forgot the specifics of how it worked anyway. So, as I've said before, the whole ability to level up, gain experience, and subsequently grow stronger all stems from the Falna, the magical blessing every adventurer receives when they join a Familia. As for how it works, well, this is the medium that allows them to receive portions of their god's divine power, imbuing them with small amounts of Arcanum, as well as placing them at the starting point of level 1. It's once there that any adventurer can start gaining Excelia to level up, and this is the XP that comes from doing anything related to the following attributes. With these five fundamental areas being ranked from I to S, a fresh adventurer will start at the rank of I0, then go up a ladder for every 100 points they gain until the max of S999. When it comes to the actual process of leveling, well, that doesn't so much rely on reaching the S rank in every attribute, but instead stems from the accomplishment of something spectacular. It's a feat so amazing for their current level that not only does it overload their Falna with Excelia, but it also impresses the gods around them. That, with a combination of stats between 400 and 800, is usually enough to make it to the next level. Now, it's when an adventurer levels up that two very important things happen. The first is the gain of a massive stat boost, and the second is the reset of all their stats back to zero. Of course, their level 1 stats are kept as a hidden baseline, but their fauna is wiped to start keeping track of their level 2 stats now. If you want to calculate overall power though, then all you need to do is just add the previous level stats with the current level. It's a system that does get a little bit complicated, but the general idea is that the higher number is always better. Unless you're Bell, a level 3 will always be stronger than a level 2, and a person with 800 agility will always be faster than someone with 400. It's a concept that'll make more sense once we look at Bell's progression. Before we get into that though, one of my favorite open world games is back again to sponsor this video. A game that just keeps pulling me back with its expansive world and collectible waifus. That's right, the free-to-play anime-styled RPG Genshin Impact. As one of the most fun and beautiful games I've ever played, I can't recommend enough checking out for yourself the various aesthetic landscapes to traverse and explore. The unique environments filled to the brim with countless secrets, challenges, and puzzles, all of which can be seamlessly played across mobile, PC, and PlayStation. And now with the new 3.3 update, not only is my personal favorite character making her return, but the addition of the Wanderer as the brand new 5 star is something many people have been eagerly anticipating. Ever since his reveal from early on in the story, this Fatui Harbinger is finally getting his release as a playable character. No longer will he just be this tragic antagonist. But aside from that and the return of Ito and Ayato, there's also the new Genius Invocation card game mode. A turn-based duel against players or NPCs where you battle with a custom deck of character and action cards. You would use those elemental dice and summons to defeat your opponent's three characters. Combine all that with a new web event that gives postcards, and that's a whole lot to look forward to. So, if you're interested in an ever-expanding world with the highest quality of characters, then I highly recommend using the link in the description to download Genshin Impact today. That or the QR code on screen right now. It's honestly a game I think everyone should at least try. Plus, anyone who does can also use this code to gain in-game rewards. But now, let's get back to the video. It was prior to Hestia's capture that a group update was done to show her Familia's progression. A useful scene that highlighted just how fast Belle grew in comparison to everyone else. So, whereas Belle increased by 50 in pretty much everything, everyone else only went up by single digits. It was a curious feat that didn't make sense to anyone. I mean, sure he did kill more monsters than the rest of them, but that definitely didn't warrant such a vast disparity in growth between them. That being the case, Hestia had no choice but to tell everyone about his skill. His Realis Freeze, which as I mentioned last time, is the core reason why Belkin overload his stats into the double S and triple S ranks. 
I'm not going to go in depth into it again, but the idea is that so long as Bell has a strong desire to grow, his stats will go up at an increased rate proportional to that desire. That goal doesn't necessarily have to be that desire to catch up to eyes, but for a large majority of the story, it is what he's pushing towards. Now, fast forward to Bell's secret mission to the 20th floor, and it's after he meets the Xenos that his stats are this. An expected improvement given the experience he'd gained from fighting monsters on the middle floors. Fast forward again to two days later, and Bell would have just fought Dix along with pretty much every other adventurer. So, the stats we see here are from that all the way up to Wiene's resurrection. It's nothing too out of the ordinary, but his agility did seem to get a larger boost likely due to all the running around he was doing. Now, where we start to see those significant improvements is first after his initial fight with Eyes, then even more so after his second fight with Asterius. If we focus first on Eyes though, it was this heated battle with the one he admired most that thoroughly strengthened his desire to catch up to her. Combine that with his brand new goal of saving Wiene, and this single encounter was enough to boost his stats all the way up to the S ranks. You see, it was likely that these two goals, which both required him to become stronger, had further increased his enhanced growth rate beyond what it previously was, resulting in this massive improvement we've only ever seen once before. If you consider that the previous time was during the days he spent training with eyes directly though, then it makes sense that a true battle with her would do the same. So, this high stakes fight, along with his desire to protect, left Bell with everything S or higher except for magic. The fight that overloaded them and made him ready for his level up was the even more intense battle with Asterios. You see, when you consider how Bell had gone toe to toe against a monster who's practically level 7, it makes sense his stats would jump up to the double S and triple S ranks. They were actually the highest they'd ever been prior to any level up. So, with any one of these serving as the spectacular feat for leveling, Bell had practically gone from mid level 3 to level 4 in a matter of days. It was a truly astonishing accomplishment that would amaze just about anyone, especially since gaining Excelia gets exponentially harder the higher the level you are. Now, to put into context just how ridiculous these numbers are, let's do a little comparison with a more average adventurer. For any person who's a competent adventurer, the general area you want to be before leveling is most if not all stats between 500 and 800. Unless you're a top tier adventurer in, say, the Loki Familia, then it's very unlikely you'll keep grinding to the A or S rank. I mean, why waste time putting so much effort into such marginal return when you can instead just level up right away and get an immediate power boost? That was the general idea that most adventurers ran with. So, if we use an adventurer who got all their stats to around 650 before leveling, then that would give the average level 3A total of around 1950 per attribute. Compare that to Bell's maxed out stats before reaching level 4 and his strength and dexterity would be 1500 points higher, his endurance over 1200 points higher, his agility a massive 2300 points higher, then his magic only 1000 points higher. It's an absurd gap in power that makes him incomparable to any other adventurers his level. Even if our hypothetical adventurer was to level up to level 4, it's fairly likely the boost in power he received from it still wouldn't be enough to surpass Bell's level 3 power. Like, even if the boost from level 3 to level 4 added the max amount of points to each attribute, Bell's level 3 numbers would still be higher. Of course, there's no way to know for sure if this is true, but time and time again we've seen Bell hold his own against adventurers a higher level than him. So, if our hypothetical adventurer was to try and catch up to this level 3 Bell, then at the very least he'd need to level up twice to face him. That's just how OP Bell is. Once again though, all this is only possible because of one of his skills. Add a couple more and some specialized weapons, and that's when you really start getting into his true capabilities. Like, take for example his Firebolt magic. As a type of magic which can be cast instantly, Bell has relied on this numerous times over to get out of a tough situation. And it was after having reached level 4 that both its firepower and speed were significantly boosted. So, it's not just his attributes that grow with his Realis Freeze skill, but also the abilities related to it as well. If we look at Argonaut next, Previously, this was a skill that could charge up to 3 minutes while stationary, but ever since last season that wasn't so much the case anymore. It was after his progression to level 4 that not only could Bell be moving while charging it, but he could also hold the charge for a total of 4 minutes now. The end of which leads to an even bigger burst of energy than before. What's even more interesting than that though are the results of some tests that Bell had been applying to it. Specifically a brand new attribute he refers to as Convergence. You see, the key thing that Bell had come to realize was that the power raised by this charge increased wherever the particles of light gathered. 
So, let's say he was to apply it to his legs, then the energy produced would make him move faster. If he was to apply it to his fist, then the resulting punch would be significantly stronger. Basically, anything from his weapons to his magic could be enhanced through convergence and made stronger by it. The caveat with a skill like this, though, is that only one charge can be made at a time, and the charge will zero out if Bell is attacked or distracted. All the energy will immediately dissipate, and that collection of physical and mental strength would disappear as well. Kind of like how mages can't cast when their chants are interrupted. If he does manage to remain safe the entire time, though, then Bell can actually perform concurrent charges. A new implementation that lets him apply Argonaut continuously. It may not be for a full charge of 4 minutes, but even a short charge of a couple of seconds can make a big difference in terms of power. So, that along with his ability to move while charging are significant buffs that make this OP skill even more versatile. Now, the place this Convergence attribute has culminated is through the ultimate attack he had unveiled just last season. A dual charge of Magic and Argonaut, both focused into the Hestia knife at the exact same time. Because the Hestia knife is capable of conducting magic, that made it the perfect medium to withstand such copious amounts of energy, resulting in a brand new move called Argo Vesta. So, what exactly this is, is first a firebolt exploded into the blade, followed quickly by a layer of Argonaut to keep it encased in there. With the particles of light infusing with the fire to make it stronger, the steadily increasing heat would begin to expand the Hestia knife, redefining its very shape to the length of a dagger and the width of a sword. Then, the longer Bell continues to charge it, not only does the blade rise in temperature in proportion to that charge, but the crimson light emitting from it becomes brighter as well. It leads to this massive burst of energy ready to decimate everything in its path, a force-based combat technique he devised specifically to defeat his rival. If someone was told to compare it to something, then the closest spectacle would be that of the Eternal Divine Flame. That was pretty much what Bell was channeling here. Now, I'm not exactly sure how strong a full charge of this ultimate attack is, but considering a 9 second charge was enough to obliterate the right arm of the Juggernaut, I'd say a full one would be powerful enough to beat just about anyone. Remember though, any sort of interruption would render it useless. So, the one thing Bell has to look out for when using it is a rather large opening in which his defenselessness couldn't be exploited. Like, I'm sure a full charge combined with his new Oxlayer skill might be able to shift the tides against Asterius. The real question in a fight like that, though, is would he ever really be able to use it? Would there ever be an opening in which Bell could charge for four minutes without Asterius hitting him? A question to which I would answer, probably not. Now, if you're wondering what this Ox Slayer is, well, that's actually Bell's new Slayer-type skill. A new passive that makes all his abilities exponentially more powerful when fighting against Minotaurs. The actual parameters are a little bit vague, but the general assumption is that Bell would be able to use abilities far beyond his level when fighting Minotaurs. It's something he manifested from his instinct, potential, and determination to fight Asterius. A mortal struggle with his toughest adversary. Another ability Bell had gained after his recent level up was a new developmental one called Escape. So, alongside Luck, which provides what's pretty much divine protection, Bell also now has enhanced speed while making evasive maneuvers. It is deemed as a bit of a cowardly thing to possess, but considering all the running away that Bell's been doing since level 1, it was really only a matter of time before this manifested. Now, the last new thing Bell had added to his arsenal was a replacement knife Wealth had crafted for Ushiwakamaru. Remember, this was the blade Bell had lost while fighting Asterios. So, Wealth seeing that Bell needed a new one, took a rare drop he had found from a unicorn, then crafted it into this new weapon called Hakugin a light and versatile blade which Bell immediately knew was exponentially superior to his previous one. With a custom grip that perfectly matched his fingers, Bell could handle this blade as if it was an extension of himself. It was the perfect item to complement his offhand and the Hestia knife. The core attribute that makes this knife so particularly rare, though, is the healing property that comes from the material it's made out of. You see, because a unicorn horn was used as the foundation, that meant it could also be used to dispel things like poison making this a weapon worth upwards of the millions. So, with a brand new blade and several new abilities, Bell is well on his way to surpassing pretty much every adventurer. He may not be at the level of Eyes or Otar yet, but he certainly doesn't need to get there to hold his own against them. Since no adventurer can overload their stats like how Bell does, a level 4 Bell is definitely already on par with a level 5 or level 6. That's an approximate idea of how strong he is now. Now, before I go, if you're a fan of these videos and Danmachi in general, then don't forget to subscribe so you get notifications for them. I'll be posting new ones every week starting next week. 
But anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this type of anime content, then you already know what to do. So, until next time, ciao!